York Open Studios has been going 10 years, it's the 10th anniversary this year. It's a weekend where um, lots of artists and makers open their studios and houses. And exhibit the work for the public to come round. And it gives people an opportunity to go and see artists working in their studios. And it's uh, where people are involved in making and creating the work. It can see the, the art and craft community in York. And it's all free access to the public. Hopefully draws in lots of passers-by as well as people who plan to come. Normally it's one weekend a year, but this year because it's the 10th anniversary it's going to be over two weekends. And there's usually about between 50 and 100 artists taking part, so artist studios are open for the public to go and have a look around, see where they work, meet the artists. It's really exciting because there's now I think 119 artists involved, so it's the biggest ever. The variety of work is absolutely fantastic. It's, it's great fun, it's a sort of festive occasion actually. I come from a business background, I've run a couple of successful businesses. I first of all worked with two artists for a few years, but when I realised actually I wanted to really trust my own creativity, I was scared, I was really, really frightened because I thought, how the heck am I going to earn a living? You know, how do you earn a living out of art? I was in uh, commercial uh, full-time employment up until about five or six years ago when I decided to go freelance. And it was at that time that I started my metalwork sculpture and I had no outlet for it particularly. Once I started work with Open Studios, as a, just as a, a, a contributing artist initially, it, it opened a few doors for me. I'm a ceramicist, so I work with porcelain clay and I do a mixture of 3D pieces and 2D pieces. So the 2D pieces are porcelain tiles that I roll out and I'm, I paint them. So each one's um, an original picture, but I paint them using glaze and slip and oxide, so ceramic materials, and they're fired in the kiln. And the pots are mainly thrown, so thrown bowls and vases, again with porcelain and decorated uh, in similar ways to the wall pieces and again fired in the kiln. Well I do collar graph prints. The collar graph, the plate, is a bit like a collage so you use all sorts of different materials to make it so that's one reason why I like it. There isn't kind of any rules. You use cement, card, bits of rubbish, any, anything you can find really that will make a texture. I um, did these illustrations, the, the flat life that I've included here, submitted. I, I nearly cried when I got heard I'd been submitted because it, it wasn't just about being submitted, it was somebody had seen something that I had done and had thought it good enough to go in somewhere. And I value my creativity, but to have somebody else do it, I, I cried. I was so happy and thrilled. I'm putting my sort of passions on the line, my creativity on the line. I'm working as hard as I can to produce the best stuff that I can produce. I call myself an architectural woodcarver, and that all involve wood carving repairs. Um, is always one word, and then there's like lettering. Um, so I've, I've done things around the country. I mean, my background is um, I did sculpture, so I actually come from a like more of a fine art background, but I drifted more into craft and making things and. I went back and did an apprenticeship in wood carving. My daily bread and butter is doing restoration and carvings. But I've always, th these works are always instigated by an architect or, a, or the building itself. This needs to be done, so I'm generally working to something, I'm, I'm replicating something that's historically correct uh, or as near as possible. While something for me, the op Open Studios, is giving me a bit more of a free reign where I can utilise my own technical craft skills but I can be, I have much more free range with my ideas. So the Open Studios just give you a focus in that sense. I've been a maker now for 35 years, more or less non-stop. 
in the varying degrees and it's gone, they've gone through a whole range of uh, different, well not exactly styles, but my concerns have changed and moved but I've always used a similar technique. But I'm just, you know, I'm one person out of millions who've made things out of clay for 30,000 years. For the last few years I've been quite enjoying playing with the idea of balance and the visual effect it has if something um, I know that I can make something that will stand up and looks completely impossible as if it's about to fall over on its nose. But if you get the engineering of it right, it'll be absolutely fine. I uh, make everything from flat sheets of clay that are cut and put together, a bit like dressmaking in clay really. It seems to me pretty pointless to make anything that's basically round in cross section because you can do that better on a wheel. So I'll do anything but round. So it's a question of just playing around and seeing seeing what happens uh, with points of tension here and uh, you know, centres of gravity somewhere that's slightly unexpected. I do stained glass windows, so wherever you go and see stained glass, somebody's actually designed it and made it, and I'm one of those people. And it just makes everybody in the general public aware that how much art is around in everything you do. Because everything that you use in your daily life has been designed by somebody, and that person started off as an artist, whatever sort of designer they've ended up being. People tell me what they want to a greater or lesser extent, so usually they've got a fairly good idea of, of what it is, and then I, I interpret it and do my own design ideas for it. In a nutshell, it's an opportunity for artists who are working very, very hard throughout the year, local artists, to show what they're doing and display their work and hopefully sell it, you know. I think it also brings people together. I'm, I'm really passionate about this idea that art is a great way of communicating. When I came up from London, where, where I'd been living for, for 20 years or so, I, I started saying to people, oh, this is really terrible in York. There's nothing, nothing like we used to go to in Brighton and Cambridge and everywhere across the country there were open studios. The sort of network was growing and there wasn't anything up here, which quite surprised me. So after I'd moaned on for a little while, uh, this friend of mine said, oh, come on, stop moaning, let's get on and do it. So I'm that sort of person, so we did. The invitation of students from York and St John to exhibit, uh, the, the final year students, and from York College, which I think has done really well. That was really taken on in order to get more younger people involved. It's just lovely to work with other artists, you know, it's lovely to chat with other artists, lovely to see how other artists are doing it, uh, discuss ideas, share our anxieties basically, you know, and, uh, and then you have a laugh. And I think that again, it brings people together, you know. So yeah, some nervousness, but excitement, you know. People have responded by laughing or smiling. That's what I'm doing. That is absolutely what I'm doing, is the reaction from other people. They get a good reaction. And if I hadn't had this goal of York Open Studios, um, I, I would have struggled to have focused on developing the work uh, further than I did. So I think it, it, it pushes us to become more creative, you know. It, it is about, well, what's art about? And for me, a society, a, a culture and a society, art is key to its development. It, it is key to a, a civilised society. And if art has lifted me all my life, it's given me some hope in my heart, even if I've been lonely, if I've been on my own, if I've not had any money, it's inspired me to believe we can, we can be something better as a human race. As individuals, we can be something better. We don't need tons of money to do it. And we can enrich each other's lives, and we can help each other, and we can communicate with each other. That's what a civilised society is about. The ultimate goal to give anybody and everybody an opportunity to see anything and everything <laughs> um, and lots of creativity um, depends who you are whether you're an artist or one of the audience I think it had been so successful for a small number of artists which is terrific but there are so many creative people here which is great I think when I was involved in setting it up 
The ultimate goal would have been that everybody knew that it was there. The main appeal is it gives you a bit of a springboard into promoting your own work probably gives you a bit of confidence. It's got such a good reputation, obviously they, they, they want to hold on to the reputation and the quality, you know. One thing is absolutely clear from my experience in, in having been involved in it in the last several years and being a visitor to it, is that it, it's beneficial on so many different levels. It's beneficial to people being inspired, it's beneficial to the artists, it's beneficial to the local economy, it's beneficial in terms of creative output and people coming up with new ideas. I hope it'll just continue as normal. I mean, there is, it does work on the good grace. There's, a, there's a, quite a lot of people, not, not me, I have to say, there's people uh, like Ruth King and Jane Blackman and Peter Donoghue and, and others who give an awful lot of their time. They had to make it bigger. And this year, of course, it's the 10th anniversary and it's bigger, it's much, much bigger. And I think that's the direction. With, with people like that, um, I think it will always long continue to flourish, really. There's pe people love it, there's always lots of people that come round to do it. It's a real occasion in York now. Uh, I mean, people look for it. And I think, you know, great art, really, really good art, comes out of that that sort of drive, that focus. Could be 20, it'll be a 20th anniversary in 10 years' time.